Now that we've been awarded this new kitchen project, it's time to start laying out some walls and cabinets. In previous videos, we learned how we can do this by drawing some AutoCAD polylines or just randomly picking points inside of our drawing. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can do it a different way, and that's by importing a PDF that we can use to help speed up this process. So if there's a set of plans out there from your customer or your contractor, ask them to send it to you in a PDF format, and that way you can start laying out these walls and products with dimensions that should match up with what they're building on site. At least close enough anyway, we know we got to always come back into the project and update with field measurements, but at least we'll be ready when we get to that point. So this video is going to go through the steps on importing and using a PDF so you can get a jump on your projects. Now to start, we're going to go and pull this file from our desktop or somewhere on our local drive. Now currently it's selected to look for a file. So just hit enter, find that location of your PDF. And before it gets placed inside of the drawing, you have this window up here that's allowing you to select some different options to do with this drawing block. And that's all this is, this is just a drawing block that's gonna be placed inside of this drawing. Drawing blocks are very common when working with AutoCAD. You may already be familiar with that. If not, don't worry, there are gonna be plenty of time ahead of you where you can learn all about what to do with drawing blocks and how they can be used to help streamline your process. So now that we have this in our drawing, just wanna show you by selecting it and typing in VE for block editor, you can edit this block definition. This takes you into the block editor interface. And just by selecting these objects, you can see that they're really nothing more but just some lines and rectangles and text created through AutoCAD. If you wanted to make any edits, for example, the dimension on this kitchen, instead of it reading 3000 millimeters, I'm gonna change that to an imperial dimension. And we'll just make that 10 feet. And you can do that throughout the entire drawing. Once you've made the edits and you're happy with everything, close out the block editor and be sure to save those changes. Now back inside of the drawing, you can see the change has been updated, showing that we have a 10 foot, we'll call it a 10 foot by 10 foot kitchen. It is also helpful because we see a basic layout of the cabinets that we need. We got our sink on the left side and refrigerator opening on that adjacent wall. So we may not be lucky enough to have some elevations, but we can at least make some assumptions and start putting some products from our library inside of this drawing. And if we need to even create a quick takeoff of material so we know what we're up against. Okay, so we have this PDF imported into our drawing. Always double check the dimensions to make sure that it's matching with what is shown. So you can see there pulling a dimension of only three inches for that wall, so we know that's not right. Also a known dimension, like a door opening if you wanted to. If there wasn't enough description in here, you can also do that. The eye, of course, the distance shortcut. So you can tell that's definitely not what we want. So the next step would be to scale this drawing up to the correct size. Type in SC in the command line. Selecting the object, which is just this drawing block. Picking a base point. And you can pick any base point. I'm just going to select our 0, 0, 0 point. And now moving your mouse around, you can see what's happening. We're ready to scale this drawing up, but I wanna make sure that it's gonna be the exact length or size that I need it to be. So to do that, we're gonna type in R for reference and now pick a reference length that we can use. We can pick this back wall, knowing it needs to be 10 feet. We could also pick a door opening reference, knowing that would be 36, but we'll do this back wall for this drawing since we know it does need to be 10 feet. So that's our reference length. Now the next step is to enter a new length, which is gonna be 120 inches for all our Imperial users out there. So we'll do 120 inches since I'm in my Imperial library. Hit enter and just to double check that dimension to be sure that we got it right. It's reading 120 inches. So that's good, that's what we want. Now it's ready to start laying out some walls, but a couple other things I wanted to show that you can do to this, to this block reference. So if there's a little bit too much information in here and we don't want to see all the different rooms and we just want to focus in on our kitchen, we can type in the command called clip, which will allow us to clip this image, selecting the object that we want to clip, picking a new boundary. This can be a polyline or a rectangle. Currently it's set to a rectangular boundary. Hit enter again and now picking our first corner and then our second corner. And now we've clipped that image to only show this kitchen. Selecting it again. You can invert that clip to show everything else that's been hidden and going back and forth. Now I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. I'm gonna get these walls laid out with the door opening and window and some of the different things that we wanna have included on these walls and also laying out the different products that we're gonna need for this project. 
Okay, so now we should have all our walls and products laid out in this drawing. It's time to dig into them a little bit more, make some modifications, and get them ready for some shop drawings. I'm going to change our view so we can see a little bit better on what's going on here. So I typed in SW in the command line to change to a isometric. You can also get there from our view list. You can also go UPL, which is the other shortcut, and that takes you back to a top view. You want to jot this down, UPL top view, UN front view, UE in the east view or looking to the right, US south, you get the idea, right? UW west, there we are looking at the back side of our cabinets because we're looking to the left. And SW, SE, NE, you get it. So anyway, that's just a quick way to change all your views around if you're into shortcuts like I am or you like the point and click option. So here we're just looking at the products that we have drawn. These are all products just default from the library. Didn't make any changes. Grabbing the glass door cabinets from our upper categories. This is a sink cabinet. And of course the different products are countertop product. And I did add some crown molding as a additional room component. Now we're gonna go through the different products and modify them to make sure that everything's gonna work as it gets time to send this off to production. But I just wanted to show you so you can get an idea of the different products that we're using inside of this project, also inside of the product list. So these would just be on our first elevation. And then as we turn the corner, we have our base one door, back over our sink cabinet, our upper two door glass, then the window opening, the next one door glass door cabinet, and then turning the corner. We do have a toe kick base underneath the tall cabinet that I've added. And again, we're going to go through all the different details on this project. Right now, we're just focusing on getting that plan inside of our drawing to help us with this first phase of drafting. And sure, I'll save those grid settings. And now one last thing that I want to do before we move on is show you how we can also turn this block into a layer that we have hidden inside of this drawing. So you'll notice as I hover over the block, we have the block reference description, gives us a layer of zero. Now I could go into our layers and just freeze this layer, this zero layer, and that will turn off our PDF. But if there was anything inside of the drawing that was set to that zero layer that we did not want to have turned off, we may want to go ahead and assign this PDF to a completely different layer. And now in the layer properties manager, to add a new layer, very simply type in the layer name, call this one PDF plan. So the different settings for that layer, this one under plot just means if you want it to print on a drawing or not color, the line type, not really necessary for what we're doing here. We just want to make sure that we're creating this new layer so we can use it for this block reference. Now selecting that block, I can right click, show properties, and selecting the new layer inside of our list, turning that to PDF plan. You go back into our layers list here to freeze that layer. So that would be one thing that we want to do is freeze this layer if we don't want it to be seen. Finding our PDF plan layer and we can freeze or thaw in all viewports. There is a shortcut for that called lay freeze. So I can actually go through the entire drawing now and select any different layer that I want to have hidden or frozen. Now this is different than the object isolation. You'll notice here as I bring these walls back and object isolation those walls have come back, but obviously the plan is still hidden because it's on the layer that's been frozen. Shortcut to bring that layer back is lay thaw. And so that's just a couple things that you can do inside of this drawing to minimize the clutter or clean up your drawing a little bit with all that extra information. Now that we've done that, we're ready to move on to our next video where we're going to go back into the products, make some modifications and other things to customize these products. So when we create that work order and send this information out to our machine, everything's going to be done the way that we're expecting. So stay tuned for our next video where we're gonna get into the next phase of taking this project from start to finish.